When tragedy strikes at an early age, the lasting effects can destroy a person or make him stronger. In the case of Charles Denny, while the loss he suffered was more than many of us could handle, he used it as a lesson that turned out to be one of the major keys to his success. Everybody's got a story where he grows up with something that um, helps shape them, maybe many things that help shape them. Uh, clearly, in, in my case, um, I lost um, brothers and sisters to a, a terrible disease, cystic fibrosis. Um, one brother and three sisters. Clearly, they've affected how I feel. And I think I got my optimism from them because I think what their lives meant to me was to have this feeling of optimism and an understanding that life's very precious and try to live every day uh, to its fullest and try to really care about people and get to know them on a personal level quickly. And if you have something nice to say to somebody, go ahead and say it, because you might not be here tomorrow. That commitment to live life to the fullest not only produced a happy personal life for Mr. Denny, but was the cornerstone of a tremendously successful career that's culminated in his current position as regional president of Kentucky and Tennessee Banking for PNC. It's a career that began over 40 years ago when just out of college, Charles Denny went to work for a different bank, spending five years getting the experience and making the friendships that would propel him through the rest of his professional life. I'll never forget, uh, the bank was Liberty National Bank, which became eventually J.P. Morgan Chase in this market. And the men and women who made those hiring decisions, whenever I see them today, I thank them for that job. From Liberty National, Mr. Denny's next step was to what was then known as First National Bank. And it was there that he began moving up the corporate ladder. I came with them in 1980, never regretted it. Great, it was a great company, great leaders, much like at Liberty National Bank, and just learned from everybody. And very, very much caring about the men and women who worked at their organization. And, and uh, many of those friendships that were forged back in the early 80s at that bank are very strong today. At First National, later National City, he was first a commercial banking officer, then a vice president, a senior vice president, an executive vice president, until finally in 2005, he rose to the position of president and CEO. And then, at a point where many professionals have reached the peak of their careers, Charles Denny faced his biggest challenge yet when National City was acquired by PNC and it fell to him to merge two robust but competing financial teams into one. We had these two banks that were merged uh, back in 2009. And it were two, uh, they were two very uh, collaborative teams, but we were competitive teams. And I think the greatest business opportunity I've ever had in my life was the opportunity to work with both teams to create one new team. And that was a lot of fun. It was a lot of challenge, but it was worth every step of the journey. Normally, the person acquired is not the one who ends up running the assets, but the people at PNC saw in Chuck the same thing that many others have seen in him, and that certainly I have seen in him, and that is he's able to gather around him people of character and capability and share with them a vision and help them understand how they can contribute to that vision. It's very rare, as Mr. Jones would point out, for an individual uh, as part of the acquired company to wind up in a significant management role in the acquiring company, which is exactly what happened with Chuck. You know, and I think the, the PNC not only recognized his community involvement, but his management skills as well. He engages people in such a manner that they really want to work with him and for him. Um, they know, folks know that he's sincere. Uh, he takes the time to listen, but he's not afraid. He also knows too that you have to make decisions and sometimes they're not pleasant decisions. You know, so he's not going to defer a decision that he knows needs to be made. Since 2009, the regional growth and success of PNC under the guidance of Charles Denny has been as impressive as they'd hoped when they put him in charge. But it's not only PNC that has benefited from Mr. Denny's efforts throughout his career. Whether it's been serving on numerous boards of directors or guiding various community fundraising projects, his philanthropic successes have been on a par with his professional accomplishments. But out of all the organizations and campaigns on which he served, two seem to stand out above the rest. First, there's the University of Louisville, where Mr. Denny has served on the boards of the University Foundation, Board of Overseers, Health Sciences Nucleus, and the College of Business, an institution Mr. Denny regards as one of our city's most important. 
But the University of Louisville is just an incredible economic engine for our city. I've seen all the ways that the university has led for our city for centuries, actually. Our city was founded in 1780, 235 years ago. U of L was started in 1798. So only for 18 years of our city's life has it been apart from the University of Louisville. I'm not sure there's a closer tie between a community's history and its university than exists between the University of Louisville and the city of Louisville. And when it comes to fundraising efforts, few causes have benefited more from his work than the 21st Century Parks Capital Campaign. He was my co-chair in raising funds for parklands, and many of the people that our son Dan and I met and raised money from came through Chuck. He knows where all the money is in the community because that's what bankers do, but Chuck is so respected by those people that he was able to set up appointments. Chuck is hands-on in everything that he does. He's a people person. If he accepts a responsibility, he takes it seriously and he follows through. I guess the one thing I've learned in life is that there's no way to get from here to there except to work really hard, care about people, uh, tell the truth, live a life of integrity and responsibility the best that you can, um, and ha believe, be optimistic, finish what you start, and never lose your energy or your optimism for life. And I really believe if you do those things, wonderful things will happen to you.